Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar from Cigar, and thanks for signing up. The title of this webinar is Defining the Right Level of Protection for Your Information. My name is Frank Garning, and I am the HSQ Manager in Cigar. This webinar is part of a series of webinars from Cigar. Our experts across business lines and locations are covering important topics regarding digital solutions for oil and gas. This webinar you are attending now is estimated to last for about 30 minutes. It will be recorded and available on Cigar YouTube channel 24 hours after the webinar. For Q&A in the end, please use GoToWebinar chat. I may not have time to answer all questions, but I will respond to questions by email afterwards. This slide shows some important milestones in our history. We started out as a generic application service provider in 2000, and during the following 20 years, we have evolved into a specialized in cloud and software for oil and gas. Our strong growth is based on organic growth and mergers and acquisitions. As you can see on the right, we have joined forces with Blueback Reservoir, Escape Technologies, and Avito Consulting. Now we have a very strong position in the global oil and gas market, and we serve more than 130 oil and gas companies worldwide. This slides. This slide shows a map of our international presence. Our headquarter is in Stavanger in Norway, and this is also the center of excellence for our GeoCloud solution. As you can see, we have offices and operational data centers around the world, typically close to the main oil hubs. These slides show our three main portfolios. The GeoCloud cloud solution, software, and consultancy. This combination of integrated portfolios makes us very unique as a supplier to the oil and gas industry. We cover all aspects of services needed, such as infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, application operation and application management as a service, and even business processes as a service. Together, these products and services cover the complete value chain for oil and gas companies. So then we are into the information security talk. Information is an, an important asset for Zagal and our customers. And our information security management system is a systematic approach to managing information so it remains secure. That implies protecting information and information systems from unauthorized access, use, disclosure, modification, or destruction, in order to provide confidentiality, integrity, and availability. To the right, you can see all the topics included in the information security management system. And if you cover all these topics in a professional way, you can be ISO 27001 certified. Segal is globally ISO 27001 certified, which means we take information security seriously. Today in this webinar, I will focus on risk and asset management. So let's have a look at IT assets. It's important that uh, we have a common understanding of what it is, and in short, an IT asset is everything IT related containing important information that is valuable to the company. And that could be a lot of things. It could be documents, but of, of course it could be uh, uh, databases, hardware, people with knowledge. It could be offices. It could be a lot of stuff, outsourced services. And all these assets need to be registered in a, an um, asset register with a the name of the asset, the value of the asset, the owner of the asset, and when it was reviewed. The value of these assets <clears throat> are, of course, uh, difficult to set. And um, there's several uh, stakeholders that are uh, in interested in the value. 
uh, these uh, stakeholders could be customers, owners, investors, employees and management, authorities, banks, and also others. <clears throat> so with this in mind, with this uh, uh, IT asset and uh, the, the need of asset register, we can have a look at the risk part. So let's say that we have these IT assets. And out there, there's a lot of threat agents. The threat agent could be a lot more than a teenager and a hoodie. It could be a non-target specific, like ransomware and Trojans. It could be nation states. This is particularly relevant for oil and gas companies. It could be terrorists and hackers, like political parties, activists, and extremists. It could be disgruntled employees and contractors, natural dis disasters like fire, or flooding, and earthquake. And that could be competitors that want to steal your intellectual property. These threat agents are not a problem, not before they decide to perform a threat. And when do they do that? Well, that depends. <clears throat> a threat could be seasonal, natural, situational, targeted, random, accidental, and intentional or uh, consequential. So there's a lot of reason for a threat agent to perform a threat. For instance, a thunderstorm, they appear normally in the autumn, not in the springtime. So if a threat agent perform a threat, you need to be protected. That means you build a wall around your IT assets. <clears throat> and this protection is based on hardware, software, processes, and humans. Machines and software programs are quite good at protecting information. And often humans are the weakest link in the security system, either, either militarily or accidentally. So if you are protected, everything is fine, but it's very easy to become vulnerable. And vulnerability comes with a change. You maybe do some change in the assets and that could cause a vulnerability, or you, there is a change in the protection, the shield, or there could be a change in the threat landscape. So if the threat agent perform a threat and utilize vulnerability, an IT asset can be compromised. And what does that mean? Compromising means affecting confidentiality, integrity, or availability. So let me use an example. If you have a salary database and you take this database and email it to your friends, you have broken the confidentiality because they shouldn't have seen the, the complete database. Uh, if you're not happy with it, the, your salary and you, you go in and you adjust it a little bit, you break the integrity. You cannot trust the data anymore. It's still there, the database is still there, but you cannot trust it. And the last thing, availability. If you are going to do the payroll, you need access to the data, to the database. If you cannot access the database, you are not able to do the payroll. So availability is also a very important part of the information security. And what you see now on this slide is the risk identification part. So if you understand these parts of the risk identification, you're good. And the next step is risk assessment, starting with likelihood. So how likely is it that the threat would exploit a vulnerability? Is it rare, unlikely, possible, likely, or almost certain? And if this happened, what is the consequence? There could be consequences operational, reputational, financial, compliance, strategic, and organizational. So there's a broad spectrum of consequences. And there are also uh, a level of consequence from low to catastrophic. And as you can see, 
the likelihood and the consequence have levels from one to five. And if you multiply the likelihood level with the consequence level, you get a number. And that number can you put in this diagram for risk exposure. And as you can see, if you have a low number after multiplying likelihood and consequence, you will have a green number. And you can also have a yellow number and a red number. If you have a red number, that means you have an unacceptable risk and action shall be implemented. If it's yellow, it's a minor, major risk. At a minimum, these risks shall be monitored. And green risk, minor risks, actions not required, can be implemented if cost beneficial. Often, uh, these risks are hard to set. Is it is it likely is the likelihood rare or unlikely? Is it likely or almost certain? It's hard to say. So you need to have more uh, several people have a look at this assessment with different skills to say something about this uh, vulnerability and the likelihood. The consequence should be decided by the top management. What is catastrophic for your company? So what you see on this slide is a risk identification and risk assessment for an IT asset. And it, actually, this slide completes everything you need to know about risk and information security. So if you do this, you're doing well. OK, uh, let's look at the level of protection. If you buy an IT solution, you will have a baseline protection because uh, you will be treated as all the other customers that you have a, a certain information you need to take care of and you get a baseline protection around these, this information or these assets. So there will be um, a defined level of hardware protection, software protection, process protection and human protection. But how do you know if this is enough? Maybe you have a very large uh, a very large IT asset with a high extremely high uh, value for your company should you still use baseline protection let me use an example let's say that you have hundred dollars on your kitchen table and you leave your house then it's probably enough to lock the door and you are good but let's say that you have one million dollars on your kitchen table. Of course, that doesn't happen often, but let's say it does now. What do you need to do? Is it enough to lock your door? Maybe not. Maybe you should secure the, the house, lock the windows. Maybe you should have monitoring your cameras, alarm. Uh, and also maybe you should have a safe to put the money into. So if you have large values, you need to secure it more. So there is two alternatives. You can either extend the shell protection. That means you protect the whole house. You use that if you have a lot of valuable uh, assets. And you can have a specific protection. That's the safe if you just have a few IT assets you need to protect, then it's maybe enough with a specific protection. But in many, case, many cases, it's wise to have an extended shell protection to secure the whole, whole house. So the goal is level of protection aligned with acceptable risk exposure. So and now I have an example how we can use this theory in, in, in practice. So let's see uh, the, the email risk identification. Email is an important asset for most companies. It contains a lot of confidential information. Uh, we use email for everything, for tender information, contract, inside information, payment information, and so on. So email 
is a very valuable asset for most companies. The thing is with email that there's a lot of threat agents. And also there's a lot of vulnerabilities. So the combination of email as an asset, an important valuable asset, a lot of threat agents and a lot of vulnerabilities, you really need to do a risk identification to protect these data. So here is an example. Uh, first column, InfoType, it could be in this email, there is tender, contract, inside information or stuff like that. And a threat could be accidental or opportunistic. And the vulnerability could be public area on lookup. So maybe someone is looking at the screen. Maybe you are on an airport or something and people are looking on your screen. What can happen? Well, they can look at your information and see something they shouldn't have seen. So you, the compromise type is confidentiality. The consequence could be very high. Maybe it's very critical information on your screen and people see it and they can misuse it. And also, if you have this laptop on your uh, lap and people will automatically look at your screen if they can. So the likelihood is unfortunately very high or likely in this case. So if you multiply four for very high and multiply likely for, for uh, likelihood, <clears throat> you have this exposure red 16. The mitigation is actually a privacy screen. So if you do that, you reduce the likelihood from likely to rare. And if you multiply rare, with the consequence, you get the mitigated exposure so as four, as, as green, the color green. So actually, if you buy this privacy screen when you're out, out traveling, and you don't notice anything about this uh, privacy screen, it's, you, cannot, you can hardly notice that you have this, but other people cannot see your information on the screen from uh, the sites. And it also costs a little money. It's about, um, it's less than 1,000 NOx or about, uh, or less than, than $100 for, for this uh, privacy screen. And if you buy it, you, well, you go from red to green exposure. So that's a good initiative. So here is a list of red exposures you get if you don't do anything about the email solution you get. <clears throat> so let's have a look at one of them, <clears throat> email account takeover. The information type is payment information, basis of decision. The threat is opportunistic, organized crime, and the, the vulnerability is email account takeover. It compromise integrity. The consequence could be very high and the likelihood is very likely, <clears throat> or at least likely, and you get this risk exposure red 16. The mitigation here is a strong authentication. <clears throat> so you need a two factor to, to reduce the risk. And if you have two factor, you go from very uh, from likely likelihood to rare likelihood and the mitigated exposure is green for so with a small amount of money you can reduce your risk exposure to green or at least yellow so if you don't do it you, you have to accept that you are living with red exposure with the, all the things that can happen so the thing is, <clears throat> if, it, if you have this red risk, action shall be implemented. If it's a major risk, at minimum, these risks shall be monitored. And green risks, actions not required, can be implemented if cost beneficial. So uh, <clears throat> thanks for attending the webinar. Uh, is there any questions? Let me have a look now.
Okay, I don't see any questions, but uh, don't mind sending an email for further questions. So uh, I will answer them, of course. So, uh, okay, this is my final slide of the presentation. So uh, please follow our blog and social channels for more knowledge. Thank you.